What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am Business01 here with Discount Gaming. And after the last video that I did, I wanted to make another one just because uh, me and some of the guys on the show were talking. And everybody that's an anime fan has their own beliefs on certain movies or shows that everybody should see. Um, especially when it comes to somebody that wants to get into anime. Everybody's always suggesting, oh, hey, you know, you should watch these or you should watch this series. So I wanted to put together a video just because, in my opinion, these are the top 15 movies that everybody should see, both anime fans and if you want to get into anime. I believe that these are kind of my opinion on the staples of anime to kind of get you ready for almost anything you're going to experience. And I say almost because there's some shit in anime that you're just not going to see coming. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it, guys. These are my top 15 anime movies that everybody, whether you're a fan or want to get into it, should be watching. And before we start this up real quick, guys, if you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button down below. It really helps us. It really helps the channel. As far as the comments go, guys, if there are anything, like if I missed a movie or if you have an opinion about a different movie, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to read it, and maybe I will do a video later on on what my fans think are the essential top 15. So let's get into this, guys. All right, guys, let's get started with number one. This is a movie that I consider to be an absolute classic when it comes to anime movies, guys. Ninja Scroll. Uh, this was personally my first ninja samurai-esque kind of movie that I ever watched. And it really kind of set the bar for me. Um, even now, whenever I watch, you know, any series or any anime movie that has a samurai ronin ninja vibe to it i'm always reminded of things from this movie and you'll even see like some references brought from this movie guys i really think that this was kind of the flag bearer in that kind of genre if you will but ninja scroll i mean as you see it's an hour 34 minutes long uh you can find it in both english and uh and japanese absolutely phenomenal a uh, great story amazing characters really interesting characters and it's not one of those where the main character is just that all high and mighty takes everything out whenever he wants to it's just it's a good story it's got great bad guys a great plot and i highly recommend seeing this all right guys next one we have voltage fighters gal kaiser uh this movie i had never heard of i didn't even know this movie had existed uh, I want to say that this was like the third or fourth anime movie that I ever saw whenever I was first starting out. What made this uh, what made this movie kind of special for me was, I mean, for one, the animation type. I had never seen any kind of animation for anything quite like Gal Kaiser. It's, or I'm sorry, Gal Kaiser. Um, it's an older movie, hour and a half long. But what's really, really cool is that if you're a video game fan, specifically, you know, anything done by SNK, you're going to start to notice characters show up in this movie that are in the SNK games. And that's what really caught my attention about this because I'm a huge video game fan, even more so a big fighting game fan. So whenever I saw, like, my from the King of Fighters series, I thought that it was really, really interesting. And the fact that it is actually Mai, it's not just a character that looks like her. Um, crazy action scenes, crazy fights, ridiculous comedy. Uh, the heroes are kind of that typical textbook, haha, I'm a superhero kind of thing going on. But guys, this movie is a lot of fun. I definitely recommend that you check it out. And let me know what you think. Alright, up next we have Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust. Um, guys, I think that this is an absolute staple when it comes to anime. It, it really, really helps to define 
a lot of different genres, both as the hero slash villain arc, um, great storytelling, incredible you know character development. Um, it does have a slight love scene to it, which is really really interesting. Um, if you look this one up, I will give you a heads up that there are two Vampire Hunter D movies. There was the original one that was released, I believe, in 88, and then there's this one that I want to say was released around 2000. I always recommend Bloodlust just because the animation is absolutely fantastic. The, the characters are there, the story's there, the action is definitely there. But I find this one to be a lot easier for newer fans to watch than the original one. Um, I also will give you a heads up that if you do a wee bit of searching, you will find a Vampire Hunter D uh, video game that came out on the PlayStation 1. Don't play it. Please, for the love of God, don't play it because it is absolutely horrid. It, it, it hurts my brain a lot. And while I give them credit for trying, it was bad. It was really bad. Alright guys, up next we have Sword of the Stranger. Uh, this is a newer movie. Uh, I want to say, I think this one was released around like the mid-2000s. Um, I didn't even know that this movie existed until one of my brothers recommended it to me. Uh, this one is only in subtitles. This one does not have an English dub, at least not as far as I'm aware at the time of this recording. But this one is a really, really great kind of just move at your own pace anime. Uh, the main character isn't a superhero, as as it were. Um, he's, he's been through some shit, like most samurai and ronin have, and he's kind of just doing his own thing, trying to get away from society, and ends up getting drugged back into all the bull, just because, you know, human tendencies, human emotions. But the fight scenes in this are absolutely phenomenal, the animation is phenomenal, great voiceover work when it comes to Japanese voices. Guys, check this one out. I, I definitely give it a recommend, and uh, let me know what you think. Alright, up next, we have Street Fighter 2, the animated movie. Uh, for those of you that have watched the channels, uh, you'll know that I am a huge Street Fighter fan. Like, it's not even funny how big of a fan I am. Um, I've been playing Street Fighter since the original Street Fighter release on the NES, and I've been a diehard fan ever since. So when I found this gem, I was super, super stoked. Um, if you go looking for it, uh, at least a physical copy, you will notice that there are three different versions, and they are very distinct. Um, I want to say it's red, blue, and yellow, I believe. I'm not positive, but if you are curious, hit me up, and I can definitely you know, let you know for sure. But one of them is a completely censored version. Um, there's no blood, uh, there is zero nudity, there's little to no cussing. It is completely, you know, child-friendly. The second one has blood and cussing, while the third one, there's not much difference, but it has the cussing, it has the blood, and it shows a shower scene of Chun-Li, which is only like four seconds long. So, I mean, really, whether you're watching censored or uncensored, it doesn't make a huge difference. You're not missing anything integral to the story. But this movie, as an overall gem, is completely amazing. You don't have to be a fighting game fan to enjoy it. Um, but it does build on a story. It does, you know, introduce lots and lots of characters. While the title is Street Fighter II... The character cast follows more of the Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo cast rather than the original. But guys, if you like fighting games, if you like anime with really good action sequences, this one is a definite. And that doesn't matter if you're a fan or not of the fighting game genre. Alright guys, next we have Spirited Away. This is an absolute masterpiece and one that I hold very near and dear to my heart. 
Um, <clears throat> the the movie itself is completely breathtaking. It has absolutely incredible animation. Um, the characters you can't help but fall in love with. The overall plot is, you know, it has its depths. It's got little pieces of humor that here and there. But what really makes it shine is after you watch it once, twice, however many times, you start to notice little tiny details that are drawn in that people actually do in real life, which is what really makes this movie interesting. Um, for those of you that know anything about Japanese culture, um, you'll know that they take their shoes off whenever they enter into a home and then put them back on you know, whenever you leave. And not only have they covered that in this anime, but she's even covered, or the, the main character has even been animated to the point where she puts her shoes on. She even taps the toes to like kind of adjust them, which you just don't find that level of detail in anime. You know, not classic, not, you know, newer, nothing like that. And it's so good to see. But guys, give this one a chance. And. This one, um, this one was done by Studio Ghibli, and oh, it's so good! It's so good. Check it out, guys. Okay, up next we have Princess Mononoke. Uh, this one is done by Studio Ghibli as well, and just like Spirited Away, it is an absolute gem of a movie. Uh, the good thing about both of these is you don't have to be an anime fan to enjoy these. Um, I always tell people that if you like Disney movies, then you're going to love these. If you love anime or uh, Disney movies, then you're going to absolutely adore these. It, it's just one of those things like there's, there's none of their movies that I don't enjoy. And that's very, very rare because normally with any studio... There's always going to be something that you don't enjoy, but Studio Ghibli always hits the nail right on the head. They can always tell you a great story. They always have amazing uh, characters. And guys, I, I feel like you're kind of doing yourself an injustice if you don't watch these. So definitely take care of that. Alright, up next, this list would not be complete without having... A Pokemon movie on it and this one just so happens to be the best one uh, Pokemon the first movie whether you are a Pokemon fan or not I think that this movie needs to be seen by everybody <clears throat> not only because I'm a diehard Pikachu fan but because it is a great great movie and I think that the feelings as well as the story that this movie brings in are almost second to none at least for this genre um but guys give this one a shot um most of you if you're watching this list have already seen it you know we all grew up with pokemon if you didn't grow up with pokemon if you want to get into pokemon if you want to get into anime this one right here is a great great place to start and i highly recommend it all right guys up next we have perfect blue uh, this is an older movie. Um, it is very much anime. The art style is as close to realistic as you can get doing animation. And it is nothing short of phenomenal. Um, for people that I come across, you know, friends, family that want to get into anime. And they, they're they not a fan of the, you know, the, the big over-the-top superheroes and fights and stuff like that. This one right here is always, always a first recommendation. This one is very down to earth. It's very relatable. A lot of this stuff uh, we have seen, you know, in the news or, you know, headlines or in murder mystery books or stuff like that. And that's exactly what this is. This is just an animated murder mystery. <clears throat> but what makes this even better is that this movie has such a cult following, and it has such an intriguing story and intertwining story, and just a whole lot of really crazy moments in it, that I believe it's on Netflix that they're actually making a real-life adaptation. It is being called something different, 
if you guys are interesting to uh, interested to find out what that is, hit me up and I will definitely get you that information. But oh, it's such a great movie, guys! Like animated murder mysteries, plot twists, um, overall villains in the background, guys. It's so great. Give this one a shot. All right, guys. So we had Perfect Blue. And now we are going to take this in a complete opposite direction with Fist of the North Star. Uh, this is an older movie. This one, I believe, came out in 88. But this movie is so ridiculous. And it's so over the top that you can't help but love it, guys. I, I, I always tell people that, you know, eventually, like, if you really start diving into anime and you really want to get into, like, the, the movies and the shows and the culture of it and everything like that, then eventually you're going to have to watch JoJo. Um, you know, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is one of the craziest animes I've ever seen. My first experience with it was on the Dreamcast. There was a fighting game for it. And all of that kind of pulled back from Fist of the North Star. While they're not related in any specific way, um, you know, you watch Fist of the North Star and you see all just the crazy over the top shenanigans that's in that. And then you, you, you can kind of go into Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and it's, it's an easier step up than going from like, oh, I'm going to watch Pokemon and then I'm going to watch Jojo and like just shit goes awry. So <clears throat> if you like action, if you like crazy over the top fight scenes and bad guys and stuff, definitely give this one a shot. It is a golden oldie if I've ever seen one in my life and it, it's just a lot of fun to watch and it's definitely one if you watch it with a friend you're going to be talking about it for a while all right guys up next we have Bayonetta Bloody Fate um if you are a video game fan or or anywhere around video games um Bayonetta might sound familiar and that's because her first game was put out on the PlayStation 3 and then they've carried that over to the PlayStation 4. The Wii ha or the the Wii U has it as well as two. Um, at the time of this recording, they're in the making of Part Three, and I love this game. I absolutely fucking love this game. It is so over the top. It is so cheesy. It is so action packed, and the anime delivers everything on that. So, my favorite thing about this is. The anime literally covers exactly what happens in the video game. So it, it's it's a really cool compromise because <clears throat> if you were always interested in the game but you kind of didn't want to play it. Because it, it, it follows the the, uh, the Devil May Cry series kind of feel to it. And they make a lot of references, which, which is really funny. But if that's just not your kind of game, but you still find it interesting. You can watch the anime and know exactly what happens in the game, and that's really fucking cool because you just don't see that anymore. So give this one a shot. Um, I, I promise you're not going to be, you know, left wanting more. Super action-packed. Um, <laughs> the main character is very sexualized, heads up. Um... But, I mean, she's not walking down the street completely nude, so that's always a plus. But great, you know, humor, great action scenes, incredible animation, you know, very detailed, very colorful, very beautiful. So give this one a shot. Let me know what you think about it. Alrighty, guys. What list would be complete without having one of the pioneers that is Akira? Um, if you guys have ever seen the movie Chronicle, uh, Chronicle was actually a live adaptation-ish of Akira. You know, the movie was incredible. Um, it was interesting how they kind of put it through all the different camera lenses. You know, really cool kind of touch to it. But Akira is absolutely phenomenal, guys. I still watch any of these movies that are on this list, you know pretty often but akira is definitely one of my all-time favorites it's it's so cool the music is just out of this world 
um, the story is enthralling and really, really cool. The main characters are incredible. Any of the characters are incredible. The, uh, the fight scenes, while being a little over the top, at least towards, I mean, towards the end, it's pretty fucking wild, but... You know, like, you see stuff that you would see in more of a cyberpunk, neo-Tokyo kind of setting. And it's so cool. But it is really, really trippy. And this was actually the movie that got me into motorcycles. Because, as you can see on the screen, that motorcycle right there is the main characters. And I want one. So, check this one out, guys. Above all else, give this one a shot. Let me know what you think. Alright, up next on our list, we have Macross Plus, the movie edition. Uh, Macross Plus was originally a TV series, uh, an anime TV series back in the 80s, the early 80s. And I didn't even know that any of this existed. You know, I had never heard of Macross. I had never heard of Macross Plus. Um, I had just barely found out about Pat Labor. So when I found this one, I was actually at a buddy's house. And... For those of you guys that do watch the channel, you know that I myself personally take a lot of heat in music. You know, I don't watch TV. I, you know, I only have my television on whenever I'm watching anime or playing video games. You know, very rarely will I sit there all day with the TV on just vegging out. But the song that starts in this movie is so incredible and the music through the entire thing is so incredible and it's so enthralling that there are a lot of times I have turned this movie on for no other reason than just to hear the you know the the, the soundtrack and the sound effects because it's so well done even for a movie that, that was released you know mid to early, or I'm sorry mid to late 80s guys oh it was so wonderful it's still so wonderful um you know, and that's just built on by an incredible storyline, amazing characters, a, you know, relatable interaction between the characters. So give this one a shot by all means. You know, if, if you like high tech, if you like aircraft, if you're into the, the mech scene, or even if you're not into any of it and you're just trying to get in, definitely give this one a shot. Uh, they do have it in English and in uh, subtitled. And it's it's a win-win. Up next, we have such a sad movie. It's so good. It's so good. But it hurts my heart so bad. Uh, Grave of the Fireflies. It is... I want to say this movie was like early 90s. But it's such... An incredible masterpiece and I don't use that word very lightly um, normally I'm really a stickler when it comes to calling anything a masterpiece um, but this movie guys this movie is actually a masterpiece it is so well done the story is so enthralling and while the story is so incredibly sad guys by the time this movie finishes you you will actually feel you know, so fulfilled because of such an incredible story being told and how well it's being told. But, like, you'll actually be able to relate to these characters and understand what they're going through and how they're feeling. Beautiful, beautiful piece of media, guys. Check this one out. Let, uh, let me know what you think about it in the comments below, please. This is one of my all-time favorite movies of all time, be it animated real life whatever guys this movie is always a banger it doesn't matter how many times i watch it Alrighty, guys on this one we have what is has and probably will be my all-time favorite anime movie ever ever uh ghost in the shell uh i know that what in 2020 i think um, which was a completely shitty fucking year anyways, but they released a live-action Ghost in the Shell movie. And for people that have watched the show before, you've seen us make fun of, you know, 
real life adaptations, whether it be video games or movies or animes or what have you. And that was no exception. The live action was complete garbo. But the anime, guys, the animation on this is so phenomenal. The story is so enthralling. Uh, the, the characters are just so incredible. I've used so more times than I possibly should have. But, guys, I cannot talk about this movie enough. I love this movie to the point where when they made... I want to say that there's like three or four more Ghost in the Shell movies. I've got all of those. I've read the comic books. I've read the mangas. I've read everything. Everything to do with Ghost in the Shell, I am such a fan of. But this movie right here, you can watch just this, never you know touch on anything else Ghost in the Shell again, and you're still going to love it. If you don't, please tell me why, because I would be very, very interested to talk about it with anybody. But it's such an incredible piece of work. It is, you know, a true masterpiece. The music is incredible. Animation is incredible. Um, and one of my favorite scenes is right at the beginning of the movie. For those of you that know what I'm talking about, you will know exactly what I mean um, when they're they're piecing things together, if you will. If you have not then, you know, hopefully you will soon find out. <clears throat> but absolutely incredible. And, yeah. Yeah, it's that good. And there you go, guys. There you have it. Those are my personal top 15 anime movies that everybody should see at least once in their life. Uh, again, whether you're a diehard fan, whether you're just getting into anime... You can never go wrong with any of these. If I missed something, if you have a different opinion, if you want to leave your own list, by all means, please, you know, throw it in the comments below. I will be more than happy to look over it. And hey, maybe I will start making videos for you guys. You know, be like, oh, well, such and such says that these are his top 15, and I'll go through all of those. But as always, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. It means a ton of a lot you know to us over here at discount gaming um i'm iron business 01 and guys as you know take care of each other help each other love one another and above all else be good humans we'll see y'all later guys